holds a rally in Searchlight, Nevada today, a story we're watching very closely. Searchlight, of course, the home of Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, a top target for conservatives in elections this year. Following a second stop in Nevada, the movement goes on the road to 23 states. Former Republican vice presidential candidate Sarah Palin is today's keynote speaker. But the first stop is Arizona. Palin is trying to help her former running mate, John McCain, hold on to his Senate seat. He is facing a tough re-election campaign right now. This rally in Tucson yesterday was the first time that the two have appeared together since their failed White House bid. And Palin took the opportunity to address a few critics over a post on her Facebook page. Watch. Hearing the, the, the news reports lately, kind of this ginned up controversy about us, common sense conservatives, inciting violence because we happen to oppose some of the things in the Obama administration. We know violence isn't the answer. When we take up our arms, we're talking about our vote. This BS coming from the lamestream media lately about this, about us inciting violence. Don't let, don't let the conversation be diverted. Don't let a distraction like that get you off track. Palin has about 1.4 million friends on Facebook. TJ? Lena, a lot of people saw that her uh, message uh, this week, after this week's health care vote, was don't retreat, instead reload. Those remarks are actually on one of her websites. Alaska's former governor is targeting 20 House Democrats she wants out of office. But critics are taking issue with the timing of that hit list, if you will. The reason for that, of course, is the it's been some, some really scary times with some lawmakers actually getting threats out there. We're going to get more into this right now with the man who wrote this book, Diary of a Mad Black PYC. By that PYC, we're talking about a proud young conservative. He's going to help us put a lot of this in perspective. Good to have him back on the show, uh, Republican analyst Lenny McAllister. Good to have you here. You talk about a, a proud young conservative. Have you been crowd, proud of the way the Republican Party has behaved in the health care debate? Maybe some fault on the other side of Democrats, but just... As a Republican, are you proud of how your party behaved? We could have done things better. There were definitely some things that I would have liked to have seen us do better. I know we went up a lot against the numbers, against the procedural aspects of this whole thing. But the truth of the matter is there's still been different fringes, not only with the Tea Party, but even within Republican activists and the Republican Party. I think they've been trying to take the proper approach, and they're trying to galvanize the party and conservatives through this. But they also know that they have to try to make sure they don't go too far with the rhetoric. And that's part of the balance that you're seeing with Governor Palin, former Governor Palin, and the others right now. How do you balance the emotion and the passion that you want people to take to the polls that they saw in 2009, but at the same time not go overboard because we can have folks throwing bricks through windows and firing shots and everything else that we've seen this you week. You talk about that balancing act, and you mentioned Sarah Palin. Let's, uh, let's put up what a lot of people took issue with uh, this week. Uh, something from her website, her Facebook page, got a lot of attention. Uh, there is the page itself, but she had a, a map. It actually showed, you see it there now, a map, the districts that she says she's targeting where Democrats need to get out, but it had crosshairs, the scope of a gun targeting these things, using the words target, don't, don't, you need to reload. Now, a lot of people say that language was inappropriate now. We've heard some of this stuff in campaigns past. Did you have a problem? with this kind of rhetoric and this kind of map being up on her website it's, at this time? It's the type of thing that eventually needed to be pulled down, but it's the type of talk you hear about in politics all the time. You yeah. target districts and you target candidates, you target demographics, and you go after and you have to reload your message and retool your, your, your activists and all that other stuff. It's just at this time, this week, everybody's going to be sensitive to it, starting with what happened Saturday, moving all the way through today. Tensions are high in America. And sometimes you have to ratchet it back just a little bit to get people to calm down. And I think the governor tried to speak to that a little bit. Again, she's trying to do this balancing act of keeping people fired up but saying, look, we do not advocate violence. And I do think that conservative activists throughout the country have been trying to get that message out. But they're, they're, they're tear-tottering as far as they don't want to scale back the activists too much because they need them involved for the next six months. Some of those activists you speak of, certainly the Tea Party, been really involved, getting involved, kicking off another, uh, another tour across America today out there in uh, Harry Reid's hometown. Is it a natural, natural marriage between the Tea Party and the Republican Party? People just uh, sometimes just naturally assume that it is, but would you say it is just a natural uh, marriage and these two groups need to be working together? I think we're starting to see the stereotype of the Republican Party of being the elitist party mm -hmm. starting to finally be stripped away. What Republicans did not do a good job of over the last decade is say that, look, Republicans are everyday Americans. We're the folks out there that 
want life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. Give me a chance to earn my keep. Give me a chance to help contribute to America. That's what you're seeing from the Tea Parties now. These are not folks that are running around coming to their Tea Parties and Rolls Royces. These are working class folks, some of them are retirees, that just want an opportunity to pursue the American dream. If the Republican Party can continue to bring those folks into the fold, they may actually be able to rebrand themselves as the party of the everyday people. And that's a moniker that the Democratic Party has owned for decades. Now, how difficult is it going to be to rebrand as a party of the people? We just had this health care bill pass. A lot of people have problems with it one way or another. But there are some things people aren't going to argue with. Uh, a child with a pre-existing condition can't be denied coverage. A kid who's 26 can keep can keep stay on his pa parents uh, in insurance. Uh, people with pre-existing conditions starting in 2014 can't be denied coverage. Most America is not going to have a problem with that stuff. But if the Republican Party tries to run on a platform of repeal the bill, they're talking about repealing some things in that bill that everybody does like. Is that going to work? I don't know if that's going to work. I think some of it may need to change the messaging, TJ. Mm -hmm. Maybe something along the lines instead of kill the bill, maim the bill. Instead of trying <laughs> to get rid of everything, the maim the bill. <laughs> in, in this sense, they may have to look at the bill as like a block of marble that they have to chisel out into the statue that they want. The Republicans didn't want the whole thing off the table. They really wanted something that was a little bit of a compromise. There were definitely areas there that everybody agreed upon. Everybody agreed upon reform. Everybody agreed upon expanding coverage, but the right way, without doing it fiscally irresponsibly. So if they look at maybe maim the bill, not kill the bill, they can start finding some compromise areas that will allow everyday Americans to say, you know what, these Republicans at least had it right, they're, they're correct on the spending as well, maybe we do need to get rid of these Democrats in November. And we're going to continue our conversation this morning with Lenny. He's going to be back in the 9 o'clock hour, we're going to be talking uh, certainly about health care again, but also Harry Reid and his fight he's got, uh, he's got going out there in Nevada. But Alina, you heard it here first, name <laughs> the bill, don't kill it. And stay with us, Lenny. <laughs> stay with us all morning. All right, we want to turn now to the weather. You know it's spring, but it certainly doesn't feel like it in